Hey everyone, welcome back to my home studio. This is my 23rd um, quarantine distraction video that I've been making since we have been off of school. And um, I'm making videos just to have my students keep thinking about clay and maybe some of you out there who are struggling because you're not in a studio or a classroom and you miss clay. And I thought this would be a nice little distraction from everything that's going on. Um, a shout out of thanks to many people who have reached out to me and asked me how my daughter was doing as I expressed in um, a couple of the videos in the past. She is doing much better. Um, she had a fever and really bad cough uh, for a fever for like 10 days and the, the cough is still going on. It's been a, um, more than 10 days now but she does have pneumonia. She's on antibiotics but she's kind of turned the corner and her fever's gone. So yay on that. Um, let's talk about this video. This one is about, I show how I lay out um, the design to make this kind of a lattice work luminary. Now it's not super duper duper precise. Um, I did use a couple of tricks. I used a piece of elastic. I used a little bit of paint. This is just gouache. And uh, I kind of laid out the lines after I kind of uh, divided it and, and marked it evenly. So again, it's not super duper precise, but I think it's kind of a, a fun little luminary as a conversation piece. I plan on putting uh, little twinkle lights in there. Um, this is similar to a couple of the other videos that I have. I'll link in the video description if you want to check those out on a couple different types of luminaries that I've made in the past as well. Um, shoot me any comments uh, in the comments below if you have any uh, questions or suggestions of things you would like to see me um, present. And um, uh, please subscribe so you can be one of my subscribers and get some more videos on working with clay. Um, I hope that this finds you healthy, so stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. In order to start laying out my design, I, I make some marks on the bottom. Now, you might be able to see the marks that I have here, but let me explain what I've done. I started out by creating um, a line that was about uh, halfway, so I was trying to divide the pot in half. And then I took that halfway mark and then I divided that into thirds. So each side was divided into thirds and I put a mark there and I put a mark there. So now this has divided the bottom of my pot into sixths. And now I'm going to draw corresponding marks straight down below. So I have the top part marked into sixth as sixths as well. So I'm going to move this so I can show. Now trying to do this over here on the side, I'm just going to use a string. I'm going to go straight down and I'm going to put like a little hash mark. Okay, then I'm going to go to the next one, start at the little mark there. I'm going to go straight down, make sure that it looks like it's straight and then I'm putting a hash mark. And I'm gonna do this for all six. I'm just using the elastic or the string as basically a plumb line just to visually make sure that I'm going straight down. Okay, so now I have this equal, equally divided into six sections, but I would like to add one more division between each of these. So I'm going to eyeball it and I'm gonna divide it into 12. And I'm, going, I'm just breaking uh, each of the existing sections in half, okay? And now when I'm down here, I'm also gonna break these in half by putting a, just a little hash mark. And again, I am eyeballing this, so it's approximate. It's not super duper precise. All right, so now I have 12 divisions on the top and I have 12 divisions on the bottom. Okay, I'm trying something that I have never tried before, so hopefully it will work out. I am going to use a piece of elastic which has a little bit of paint on it. So this is um, a gouache, uh, a gouache, uh, a wash, <laughs> that's hard to say. All right, so I'm painting this piece of elastic with watered down 
gouache paint. Um, I wanted to pick something that I knew wouldn't really affect the clay once it's fired. Okay, now I'm going to start off, I'm going to start off at one point and then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go over three. Okay, and as I press it on there, hopefully it'll leave a line. There it goes, I left a line, okay. So I'm gonna do that for diagonal lines and hopefully this will work. I thought about having my um, son come down and hold it for me and he was like, Mom, I don't wanna be in a video. But uh, I think this will work okay. So now I'm gonna move to the next one. Start at the top, go to the next one, okay? Now the reason I'm doing this is this is going to be um, getting a little bit more narrow and a little bit fatter depending on where it, on the pot it's going to hit. And this uh, watered down paint should not be visible after it fires. I found this process of um, applying the little line, the elastic line, to be rather easy. It, it worked rather well with the paint on it. Okay, now I just messed up right there. Somehow I missed the top mark. So I can just wipe that off and I'm gonna redo it. And again, the red, if I have residual red on there when it fires, it shouldn't matter. So I found that this process with the elastic and positioning it on there did work rather well. I could stretch it slightly as it went across the belly to get it to conform. Now, if some of them don't look quite evenly distributed, I'm just gonna try it again. Like that one definitely didn't look even. I'm gonna try it again. And again, anytime that you make a mistake, you can easily just sponge it off um, and tweak it and fix it. And again, I'm doing this all by eye. I'm just really uh, visually just trying to make it look even. I'm not doing anything so mathematical and precise. Okay, now I'm taking my paintbrush with the paint on it and I'm drawing the inner part of the diamonds. The lines there are going to be the st structural parts that stay on the pot. And then the inner diamonds that I'm uh, outlining there, those are going to be the parts that I'm actually cutting away with the X-Acto. So I'm just giving myself that as a reference uh, before I start cutting just to make it easier. Okay, now that I've laid out the lines, I went ahead and kind of drew the internal diamond-ish kind of shapes that I want to use um, as an approximate guide when I go to cut this out. All right, my goal is I want to round the ends of those holes so they're not super sharp. And I'm gonna take my time and try to cut these out as carefully as I can. And this was a fairly long elapsed portion that I uh, really sped up and condensed. I'm just using an X-Acto when I cut this out and I'm cutting them out along the, uh, the outer edge of the lines there. And I do have the pot upside down at the moment. In cutting the very last holes up here on the top, I find that they're just a little bit on the small side to maneuver in there real easily. So I'm going to drill the hole first with my driver and then I'll enlarge it to make it look more like a triangle. And I'm just speeding along this process, of course, to make this go a little bit faster for you of the rest of the cutting out of the smaller triangles. And uh, again, this is upside down, so I'm actually working at the very bottom of the pot here. I'm working with it upside down so the top doesn't dry out too quickly. 
Okay, I now have the form entirely carved. Now I'm ready for the cleaning process. And the cleaning process that I'm going to do is using a paintbrush with water, a stiff bristled paintbrush with water, knock out any debris that I might have, and just, I'm gonna go in there and smooth out all of my cut lines to really make it super clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the rest of this and uh, then I'll show you when I'm done. And here I'm just repeatedly uh, going over those cut edges, um, trying to reach toward the inside as much as possible, but really cleaning that outer edge as well. And I also needed to fix any of the little marks that perhaps I made on it when I was doing the hash marks of divisions. So hopefully you enjoyed this and learned something, and uh, please subscribe if you want to see more videos on working in clay. Thanks.